The Bible is honest about such horrors as we have watching occur right now in Israel's past. Notice what I'm about to tell you. Stay with me. The prophet Isaiah, uh, the prophet Elisha, mourned over the Syrian general that would kill Israel's young men with the sword and dash in pieces their little ones and rip open their pregnant women. Second Kings chapter eight verse twelve. Isaiah describes generally that the Syrians on the east and the Philistines of the west devour Israel with open mouth. Isaiah nine twelve. Asaph mourned as he writes the psalm, Psalm 79 and 4, we have become a taunt to our neighbors, mocked and derided by those around us. But the thing that got me more than anything else was Jeremiah's prophecy, who said this in Jeremiah, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. When I watched as there was a number of babies, I'm talking about babies in arms that were being held by these terrorist Hamas terrorists and acting like they're taking care of them, I thought in my mind that it's been seven days, now eight days, since those mothers have had those babies in their arms. If those mothers are still alive, wonder what they are doing in anguish. They're praying, crying, and refusing to be comforted just like Rachel, because ladies and gentlemen, if your baby was captured and they put it on a video and said, this is your baby over here, we've got them in our arms, I'm telling you it would be hell I would cross over on my knees because that's my baby ladies and gentlemen let our hearts beat with passion for the Jewish people because there is an evil that's coming to wipe them off of the map but God who sits in the heavens says I will protect my chosen people to the last one You can bring up all of your excuses and ideas about this group and, oh, what about this group and this group? But ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it. The very Bible that you hold in your hand declares that the people of Israel are God's chosen people. I want you to know, America, you are not God's chosen people, America. The Jewish people are God's chosen people, and he's never changed his mind about that. Jeremiah further warned and mourned, my young women and my young men have gone into captivity. He said, women are raped in Zion. Listen to this parallel. Young women in the towns of Judah, princes are hung up by their hands. No respect is shown to the elders. Young men are compelled to grind at the mill and the boys stagger under loads of wood. The old men have left the city gate and the young men, their music, the joy of their hearts have ceased and our dancing has been turned into mourning. This is from Lamentation 1, 18, 5, 11 through 15. The parallels in the Bible of what's taking place are too many, ladies and gentlemen, for us to miss. The most frequent enemy of Israel were the Philistines. You've heard about them. Remember Goliath and his four brothers? Their land of the Philistines includes the very present day of of the Gaza Strip right now, from the time of Samson to the time of Hezekiah. The Philistines raged and invaded or fought against Israel more than 20 times. Gaza's current inhabitants right now, Hamas and and the like, seem to be continuing that 3,000-year-old animosity to this very day. Hear the word of the Lord in Psalm 83. Behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. This is in your Bible. Psalm 83, two and four, two through four. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. This is the same statements that you're hearing from those that are in authority, those that are in leadership in these terrorist organizations, and mark my words, if Israel does not take quick action against what's taking place right now, it won't be 
long because the UN is already doing it that the nations of the world will begin to say you need to resist, you need to hold back, there needs to be a ceasefire. But I got news for you. If Hamas came down the streets of Pace, Florida today, kicked down your door and started shooting everybody in the house and taking your baby captive, I wonder if you would sit there and watch them do that without resistance. I believe that in this very small town, you better not do that in a small town. And I just want to say it's time for you to rise up and say not in my house. As for me and my house, we're not only going to serve the Lord, but I say I am Israel high. What does that mean? The people of Israel live, ladies and gentlemen. And while the enemy's trying to kill them and destroy them, all down the ages, Israel is still alive. I choose to stand with Israel because God stands with Israel. Be seated. I know this is making some folks nervous. It did the preacher I spoke to earlier on the phone today. Because this is not a time for you to waffle or try to get in the middle. This is a time for you to choose you this day whom you're going to serve. This is a time for Moses who's crying out from the top of the rock. For all of you that are on the Lord's side, get over here. Did you hear what I said? All of you that are on the Lord's side, get over here. That doesn't mean you have to be evil and angry and you're not gonna fight with weapons of this ground because the principalities and powers that are ruling over these regions are spiritual. And ladies and gentlemen, if we've watched one thing, we've watched God open up and do miraculous supernatural things with Israel throughout the years. About the time, I'm calling remembrance right now, about the time, I believe it was in the Yom Kippur War, there were a few soldiers that found themselves in the middle of a mine field and were unable to get out of it because there were mines everywhere and suddenly they begin to call on the Lord and God sent a windstorm across that desert and what do you know he uncovered all the mines that were out in the middle of the field and they walked right through the minefield unscathed ladies and gentlemen you better not count Israel out when the odds are against her God is for her and everybody that's for her better make their voices heard right now I said, you better make your voices heard. And I want to let you know what kind of church you're in. Pace Assembly has always supported Israel. So if you're a Jew hater or anything else, you can hit the door. Because as for this house, we're going to support Israel with all of our heart, with all of our prayer, and with all of our support.